Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Snake Dog here and on the bench in front of us today we have our Zagana PX9 again. And I've done a couple things to it. We can see I don't have my sights on here right now because I ordered some fiber optic sights that I'm going to be installing on here. Your slide cuts are that of the M&P. So I ordered some M&P sights. Uh, True Glow or High Viz, can't remember. Um, but they'll be here in a couple days. I'll install those. Paint filled the PX9 on there. Just wanted to stand out a little bit. And stippled the back strap. So I grinded down all of the uh, factory checkering that was on there. There were like bars going across. And then I just did a nice little tight stipple pattern on there. Um, the reason I did that is because the owner of Traction Grips reached out to me and he came up with a prototype for this pistol. And uh, he wanted me to, um, or I said, you know, why don't you send me a pair and I'll do a video for you. So <clears throat> he sent me these and uh, I'm going to go ahead and install them on there because as I mentioned in my review video, this <clears throat> portion of the gun is extremely slippery. The back straps were slippery. Um, this part's decent. Uh, I think it's more the pattern than it is the actual friction. So the pattern's okay, um, but I think the traction grip, like if you look at my video when I compared this to the XD9, I use traction grips on my XD9 as well. Um, I've bought the traction grips for my PX4. If you look back at my video, uh, I've bought traction grips for Glock Gen 3, um, quite a few other guns. Oh, uh, MMP9, uh, first gen. Yeah, so I've, I've owned several. Highly recommend them. They're a little bit less expensive than Talon, and they're just as good. Uh, you can get rubberized. Uh, I believe they used to have, and they may still, um, a light gray uh, color or this black. And, and it's basically like GT5000 grip tape, um, which I have spoken highly of before as well. And so what we're going to do here is C, we're just going to do a test fit. Uh, the gentleman that runs this company told me that uh, whatever the rear back straps are made out of, uh, they will not, this will not adhere to it. So that's why um, if you want more texture right here, uh, you will have to do a stippling. So uh, what you need to do when you do installation on these, I'm not sure if you even sent me. Okay, so yeah, he they did make uh, instructions. So main overlay wraps around the front of the pistol, which is obvious. T-shaped, it should say piece, it says P-I-E-E, -E, fits the bottom of the trigger guard against the main piece. So this T, right down here in the bottom left corner, um, I'm guessing it's going to go right across there and then down up the trigger guard bottom if you like that. Personally, I don't like that, so I'm not going to install that. And then the small rectangle fits the front of the trigger guard. So if I'll take this light off of there. There's some jimping on there. Um, you could use uh, this piece right there to cover that should you choose. So what I like to do when I install these, and I believe it is recommended, um, it even says use warm water and a drop of dish soap on a lint-free cloth to clean the surface. 91% isopropyl alcohol may be used, but doesn't always remove the oily residue. Well, I happen to have 91% isopropyl alcohol here, and that is what I'm going to use. Dry the surface thoroughly, determine the position of the overlay before you take off the backing. That's important. Remove half of the paper backing, begin installing the main overlay, removing the backing as the rest is positioned. Avoid touching the sticky side of the overlay as it's being installed because it could harm the adhesive. And then you take a hair dryer or a heat gun held at a smart distance and, and then you just start squeezing and just start gripping it and forming it and pushing it against there and it's awesome. So I'm gonna get this thing cleaned uh, hang on one second, let me get this cleaned, and then we'll start putting that grip on. So here we can see 91% alcohol. What I use is coffee filters because they are lint-free. So 
Um, they're not super absorbent, so they they take the alcohol really well, and it spreads out into it um, really quickly. And then you can just kind of fold it over on itself and squeeze it, and then it'll saturate the whole thing. And then you can just start wiping it down. Of course, we're working with a safe firearm. I don't, shouldn't even have to say that anymore, but um, we'll drop, drop the mag out of there. So what you want to be careful of is as you're wiping it down, you're not dragging your fingers or anything across or touching areas that you've just cleaned. So now what I'm going to do, you can see my stippling kind of shredded this a little bit, but it's no big deal because that's not where the overlay is going. Um, so now you just kind of want to brush it off with using your uh, same material and make sure that you don't have any little residue pieces um, that are going to affect anything. So like on the front right here, knocking that out. Uh, yeah, so that should be good. So be careful how you set your gun down. If you have any residue on your table, you don't want to lay your gun down, you know, on that uh, after you just did that. Uh, what I think I'm going to do, since I'm not using those, is I'm going to cut that off. Let's see if I can get this to stand up here. Okay, so I'm going to cut these off. One second. So I just took some scissors and snipped those off so I can have them if I choose to use them. That way I didn't just peel them off and stick them onto something so they're still on the backing paper. So I'm going to take a peek here. So it looks like this right here is going to be what frames your magazine release. Yep. Okay. So let me take half of this back, or a portion of it, and it's it's a nice glossy semi-heavyweight paper, so it'll kind of stay where you want it to be. So I'm just gonna do this and then figure out where I want to start my grip at. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna follow the contour of uh, the back strap and line that up with that and start getting that situated. So, I'll put this piece of paper right here. Another thing that can help is if uh, you reference the picture and see see how on theirs the tape is going around the back strap underneath the beaver tail so that is going to be important but you also want to see how close he took the tape to the back strap piece um, i think i'm close enough i hope i'll find out here as i start pulling some more of this paper and see yeah i'm good so now as we're working this way, you can see where the cutout is, and it is going around the back side of the magazine release. So now I'm just going to work this in. And don't worry right now if it's not super flexible, because it, when you start hitting it with the heat of the heat gun and the hair, or a hair dryer, that's when you're going to be able to change it. Okay, so now I've got that. Okay, so I just worked it across the front, and I'm leaving this somewhat bent right here. And there we can see it does line up excellent. Now, I'm going to push this down and get it around the back side of the mag release. And then I'm going to work up. I'm going to start sliding it across in here. And this is going to flatten out once I put the heat to it, but right now, of course, it's just cold, stiff material. So, let me see, I want to kind of work that down just a little bit, so it lines up a little better with the, 
there we go okay so here we go it's time to heat it now and time to fix that so let me grab the uh, heat gun and I'll show you how that process works okay so what I have here is a two-stage heat gun I use the low setting here this is Chicago Chicago electric from Harbor Freight these are like you can get them as low as like eight dollars so my most important area right now that I want to worry about is this back so I'm gonna turn this on low sorry I hope you can still hear me I'm just gonna start hitting that material keep it moving there you can see when it starts getting flimsy then you know you're ready to press it down so you're gonna do this in stages so press it down and there we go that looks really nice so now you can take your hand up in your in your back strap press it down and I'm probably gonna end up trimming that a little bit with a razor when I'm done let's see you can kind of see how see how they're not quite perfect so I could either stretch like lift it and stretch it and try um, making it line up seamlessly or I can just trim it with a razor so I'm gonna keep working on the grip here I really want to get around this mag catch I'm gonna do one side at a time here I have a popsicle stick and I'm just gonna kind of use that to get down They do such a good job on these grips of how they die cut them and you know you don't have to do any like trimming or modifications unless you want to. They're just such a good fit right out of the box. Okay, and now I'm just going to do some more squeezing. So you just really get a hold of your gun, just start working it over. Oh, what a difference. What an absolute difference. You guys did a really, really good job on these traction grips. Wow, what a difference. So much better. Make sure you work down all your edges. So like, you know, down here by your mag well, up around your back strap area. Make sure you're really getting around that mag well. Another good thing to have when you're doing this <clears throat> is a hobby knife set. And you can pick these up cheap a lot of places too. Hobby Lobby, um, arts and craft stores, but you'll have all kinds of different razor knives in there and interchangeable blades um, you can get them look at how fine I mean, you can get them as fine as this let's see show up for you there you go and this um, you know this works really good for if you didn't quite put it on right but you were happy with where the way it felt you know or you you felt something was impeding the button, your mag, mag release, you could just use this and just shave it. What I'm probably gonna do is just trim this right here real quick. So all I did is just drag the line and then I'm gonna lift up. And there you can see the little piece that I'm gonna take off and then I'll just grab some tweezers here. There we go. And now you can see it matches up. Everything about it looks 
looks more uniform. Now because I just trimmed an area and partly lifted it, I'm going to hit that area with heat. And then same thing, another squeeze. Get your hand up in there, use your thumb. You can use a dowel, wooden dowel. You can use a marker, like a big Crayola marker or a Sharpie. Um, but there we go. So, I mean, it only takes a few minutes to throw those on and the difference in the handling and just the way the grip feels, night and day. So I want to thank Traction Grips for sending that out for me to make this video for you guys. Uh, if you have this PX9 by Zagana, uh, I would, I'd recommend it. To me, the gun was really slippery without it. Um, I'm going to hit right in here with some heat yet and press down on there because I don't quite like how that one looks yet. It looks like it's lifted a little bit. Um, so I'm just going to keep doing that and uh, put it back in the safe. Wait for my sights to get here. So thank you guys for watching. Thanks again to Traction Grips. Check them out at www.tractiongrips.com. Uh, proudly made in the USA. How cool, right? And there's the UPC number for this model right here. Hopefully these are available now for retail. So thank you guys for watching and always shoot safe.